Okay, ladies and gentlemen, boys and... Hey, welcome to the Speared Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears. I got some fucking great news, some amazing news, and some terrible news, which of course we will cover. But straight up, right, first off, I'm happy to say that my official Spearhead Sundays mug has finally fucking arrived and I'm enjoying my McDonald's coffee from it. Oh, tastes like a long time I waited in shipping times. But it doesn't matter. If you want your own mug, support the show on Patreon. There is a tier where you can get your own mug. It's only through Patreon. You can't get it anywhere else. It's fucking great. Um... Dude, the way they shipped it, well, I understand why it took so long. It, it won't take long for you. It took long for me because this is, for, for whatever fucking reason, they didn't want to send it to me until it was properly set up for you, right? So a uh, hundred cunts got it before I did. But anyway, they sent, I don't know if this is what happened with yours. They sent it to me in some kind of bomb shelter. Like, it was got this fucking giant package that was like a foot long and it was just full of like air and foam and pellets and, and fucking shit. I thought, what have I bought? I had one of those moments in quarantine where you're like, what the fuck did I purchase? I know, I mean, I've been buying, I think a lot of people are doing a lot of online shopping out of pure boredom. I have luckily strayed pretty far away from that. I saw that happening to me and then I thought I need to nip this shit in the bud or it's going to be over for me and my finances, okay? I already had to pay for a whole tour that I didn't, that I didn't end up fucking doing. I don't need those shoes. I haven't bought shoes at all, right? So my girls got sucked into that. Every day, shit's just arriving at the front door. I'm like, what is this? She goes, it's a fucking pot plant. We don't need that. The other day, we got a fucking something arrived in this big box. I'm like, what's that? She goes, it's a salt pig. I was like, what the fuck is that? She goes, oh, it's where you put salt. I mean, what, what? In the shaker that it comes in? Why don't we use that? Anyway, guys, the point is, online shopping is bad. Unless you're buying stuff from me, because I'm chasing the bag, and we love that here. <laughs> Uh, if you want your own mug uh, and two and uh, sorry, if you want your own mug and uh, an extra half hour of this podcast, it goes up exclusively on Patreon every single week. There's an extra uh, a half hour of the podcast. I just continue on, and it's only on Patreon. And I do my most fuck stuff there. So if you want, you know, mug, Discord, more podcast, Patreon's the way to support me. Now I need to address. Uh, that's the good news out of the way. Now the rest of the, I understand that there is an hour left, guys. Uh, and if you're wondering if it's all bad news, absolutely. I need to address some allegations that have come up against me uh, that are very serious. I take very seriously and I, and I would like to stomp them out now, okay? Some allegations, uh, two sets of allegations have come forward that, that I will not stand for. I think they're slanderous. And if they do continue, I will very seriously be taking legal action against the people saying them. I'm talking about you, okay? I know you're listening to this. I know you listen to what I what I do. You listen to my podcast, okay? And I'm, I'm telling you right now, if you don't stop these fucking allegations, I will pursue legal action, okay? You know who you are. A lot of people in my latest video have been commenting that I've been going gray, that I've got gray hair, and I won't stand for it, okay? I have so many comments from the last thing. I, have, I haven't been cutting my hair because it's illegal to leave the house. Victoria Police just got the... Uh, the permission from the federal government that if they do see you outside the house and you live in Melbourne, they can shoot you on site. In fact, they're encouraged to do so. Uh, so you can't leave the house. That's a real law in, in Victoria. If they see you outside the house and you're from Melbourne, they execute you in the street publicly. Uh, that's a real law that's just happened. Daniel Andrews, I support it. Of course, we all should. Uh, and But that's what's happening in this state. Um, and uh, obviously, I can't go to the hairdresser because I don't, I don't want to get executed. I've got shit to do, right? I've got to stream on Twitch. By the way, that's fucking tomorrow, okay? Uh, so follow me on Twitch. That's happening. Uh, Spears on stream. I, you, you know the fucking deal. I'm trying to tell my story. I'm, what I'm saying is I haven't got my hair cut. And whenever I don't cut my hair for a while, you know, people ask me, oh, why do you get your hair cut every fucking couple of weeks, every three weeks, every month? Because when I don't... Everyone in the fucking comment section starts saying scurrilous lies like I'm going grey. And I'm, and I'm not going grey, okay? I've been grey. Let me tell you that. I've been grey on the side of my head like fucking Mr. Fantastic from the Fantastic Four with the length to prove it, okay? Since I was like 22. It just runs in my family for some reason. For some reason, we don't go bald, but we do go grey. My uncle on mum's side... He went grey at like 30-something. That could be in my future. I might be a fucking silver fox. You know, dude, when I get my new chin and, I've, and I'm a silver fox, 
You better keep your girlfriends away. You better keep them at home. If you take them to a show, you better fucking make them wear vision blockers. Because if they see me with my silver fox hair and my brand new chin, guess what? You're single because she's coming home with me. That's actually going to be a big consideration. If I get my new chin before the new tour and I've, I keep going gray, I become a silver fox with a brand new fucking chin. Guess what? The, the cost of a hotel is going to skyrocket because no longer will I need a little, you know, two bedroom, one for me, one for Keelan. And I'm going to need the whole fucking hotel. It'll be one for, one for me, one for Keelan, and then I'm going to need 99 beds for everyone's girlfriend who comes to the show. Because when I get my new chin, and when I be- progress fully and evolve into a silver fox, you're single. I'm taking your girlfriend home. And that's not that I want to. I'm not planning to do this. I'm just saying that when I get my new chin, it's over for everyone. You're single. I'm sorry. I, I'm, I know it's not fair. And, and I'm, not, I'm not particularly excited about it. I'm just trying to breathe, you know? I just want to be able to breathe when I sleep. I don't want sleep apnea. Me having, taking your girlfriend home, that's just an unfortunate side effect. We all know that. With a lot of medical practices, with a lot of medicines, there are, there are side effects, and you have to weigh those up, you know? Because I'm, I'm trying to fix my sleeping. I'm not trying to fuck your girlfriend. But if that's what happens, it's out of my hands. And I hope you understand that. And uh, I just want you guys to know that I'm not going gray. I've been gray. It's just because of the length that you've started to notice. So I'm not going gray. You're going blind because you haven't noticed until then, okay? Now give me a girl. (laughs) Right? The first set of allegations. The second set of allegations I take even more seriously. To the women that have (laughs) known. There's been a lot of people who listened to last week's episode of Spearhead Sundays. And I got a lot of comments about this. I got a lot of messages. A lot of people uh, went, now, as you know, I love Manscaped, the company. We have a great working relationship. In fact, they just renewed their deal, okay? They're not, they're not paying for this at the moment, but they're coming back on board. We're just, we're just sign, crossing the T's and dotting the I's, or they're transferring me money. What do you want me to say, okay? I'm waiting for that, Okay. Uh, and then that's going to continue. Now, I, I was talking about that continuing on last week's podcast. Now, a lot of people are saying a lot of things along the lines of, when I talked about Manscaped, the entire time I called them Dollar Shave Club. <laughs> now, look, Dollar Shave Club, I've worked with them before. I, they no longer sponsor the show, so I'm happy to say that they're dead to me. And I would never mention them on the show. And I would absolutely never say that their name instead of Manscaped, okay? They're completely different companies. Manscaped, it's about your nuts. Dollar Shave Club, ugh, shaving your chin. Who cares? I'm all about nuts. If you hadn't noticed, I care about the kempness of your nuts. And I, I care about your pubes being a nice length. Because that's really why I started this show, was one, to get a new chin, two, to make sure your nuts look nice. That's the only reason that I'm here. So to have a lot of people, you know, edit, misleading edits that make it sound like I said Dollar Shave Club instead of Manscaped, I just want to say that you are besmirching my good name and my lawyers will be in contact. In fact, if you go back and listen to last week's episode... If It only sounds like I'm saying Dollar Shave Club if you listen to it at normal speed. If you go back and listen to it in slow motion, you can actually hear me say Dollar Shave Club, and then at the end of that, I say psych. So I was never talking about them. That was all an elaborate ruse, an elaborate joke to promote the new upcoming Manscaped <laughs> Lawnmower 3.0, okay? So I just wanted to start the podcast off with getting those allegations out of the way, and now we'll get into the rape stuff. <laughs> no, no, we won't. Um been having a good week. I'm excited to start streaming on Twitch. That starts tomorrow if you're listening to this today because today's Sunday. But that starts, uh, what is it, fucking uh, sun, uh, Monday the 14th uh, at 6 p.m. Australian Melbourne time. Now, if you're not from Melbourne, I highly encourage you to never ask me what time that is in your city because do I live there? The answer to that question will not surprise you because I'm operating on Melbourne time. So why the fuck would I know what time that is in London? Huh? Why don't you think about that? So many cunts go, oh, what time is that in fucking Google it? Genius. The amount of time it took you to type in a fucking comment section, hey, Lewis, what time is that in fucking New York? Do that 
in Bing. Don't do it in my comment section because that makes you look like an idiot. Some of these cunts I know the answer to. If you're from Perth and you ask me that, I know the answer. But I'm not going to tell you at a principal. Google it. Okay? So that's starting uh, and uh, on, on 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. Uh, give or take. I'll definitely start on time. I might go on longer. Uh, and it, it's, it's looking like at the moment it's going to be Monday and Wednesday for sure, 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. Now, uh, if there is a big demand from the international people, because I understand for a lot of people that's like fucking 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. in your time. Not that I would ever Google it uh, and tell you that um, because you need to figure that shit out your fucking self, you child. Um, but uh, I understand that is a rough time slot for, for a lot of international people, so I might that might change. There's definitely going to be at least one Australian prime time, and then maybe that maybe the Wednesday I'll start doing it my morning, which is whatever. But that's like you know that we'll see how these two go at Australian time, and then we'll fucking work it out. That's what I'm trying to do with Twitch, uh, and I would love 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 for you to be there. So that's tomorrow, 6 p.m. Melbourne time figure it out. I'd love to for you to be there. It's going to be fucking awesome. I'm affiliate now, so you can subscribe. Dude, I saw a bunch of people. Subs I'm looking at my fucking analytics right now. 29 people have subbed already. I haven't even streamed yet. So that's, you know, that's such a, uh, a an amazing welcome, and it gives me a lot of confidence that this is going to work because, you know, with the amount of shit that I'm doing with YouTube and podcasts and fucking uh, the business side of thing, merch and all, all this kind of extra shit and then plus touring... I really want to make this shit work, and the you know obviously the way that it works is if people sub and it brings in money that I can then put back into streaming because at the moment it's like the, the setup that I have I haven't spent like fucking any money on it other than cables it's just like cobbled together from all of my like YouTube and film gear and then it's just going so so I hopefully if it if it generates a bit of money that I can put back into it that means it'll be sustainable and I can continue doing it once touring comes back in which I, which would be amazing. Because, uh, you know, right now I have the, top, the freedom to try it and see if it works. And if it does, amazing. Because I've been, uh, the few test streams that I've been doing, I've been fucking loving it. I have been missing uh, stand-up so much. I, dear God, I want to see the offended face of a 30-something-year-old woman. I miss that. You know, I, that's what I truly miss. Making you guys laugh, whatever. I know that's going to happen. What I really want is some 30-something white chick at a fucking comedy room who has no idea who I am. I get up and I start spewing my heinous material and she goes, oh, I don't know about this. I miss that. <laughs> Hope you guys have uh, been having a good week here. Uh, I have. I've been. I've kind of got out of my slump because of this streaming shit. I realized that I was, I was in this fucking... I was in this weird slump where I was like, oh, I was all demotivated. It was because I wasn't doing anything new, nothing like challenging. And and because my whole thing has always been, in, in a way, it's 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 just been like building and building and moving forward and attempting this this shit that you know last year's Lewis would have gone. That's not going to fucking happen. That's crazy. It's always been that. And then just to go back to just fucking doing a video or two a week and podcasts, I was like, ah, oh, this is fucking, it's too routine, it's not risky, it's not exciting, it's kind of boring, like, I love it, but it's not like, I don't know, it's not hard, which which brings me back to that thing, whenever YouTubers and Twitch streamers argue, oh, my job's hard, it's like, cunt, it's literally not hard, shush, um, but I've, I've been really enjoying the challenge of building a new thing, and I'm fucking psyched for it, I just got my, uh, my emotes and my little sub badges, they're really cool. I won't talk too much about it. Just fucking look at it. Search Lewis Spears Twitch. Follow me. It happens tomorrow, and it's going to be fucking sick. Uh, what else did I want to talk about here? Oh, yes. I, uh, wanted, I wanted to... I know I know. I did say that we were moving away from uh, from bad, from, from good news, uh, and the rest of it would be bad news, but I, I do have a little bit of good news. I... Uh, I would really like to say thank you so much for all of the amazing feedback on uh, on this project that I've been working on for a while, you know, it, it's something that I've been doing for for a long time, and obviously I had to keep it a secret um, because you know, like NDA agreements and com big companies that you that you're working with, you can't like reveal this stuff until it's done. But now it's out, now it's finished, and now people are like consuming it, and and, it, and it's amazing to see the incredibly positive uh, reception that my new film Cuties has received. Uh, I was at the, I was the, the lead director of the film Cuties, and what I what I really loved about the film 
was uh, just how much everybody liked it. You know, just seeing the incredible uh, positive reception that it received on social media, just everyone a fucking loving, you know, nine to 11 year old girls in booty shorts, shaking their ass and touching their pussy. It's amazing to see that that's what the world wants. And uh, I'm super glad you guys liked my film. So thank you very much. Uh, no, just kidding. <laughs> that film's fucked. Should we talk about this? All right, we'll talk about that. Um, the Cuties film. Now, when this first came out, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you like a, uh, a, a little fucking rundown. Of, of the whole thing and, and my perception of it as it's kind of been rolling out. So it's a French film. It won Sundance or some fucking indie French movie film festival, which already, when anything wins Sundance or one of these film festivals, I'm like, all right, great, more pretentious garbage, okay? Um, now, question one, have I watched it? No, okay? You couldn't pay me money to watch a normal French film, okay? I don't want, I don't want to watch anything made by the French. If, you want, if I wanted to watch fucking an, an, an hour or two hours of people being pretentious cunts, I would watch the Kardashians, okay? I'm not going to watch Cuties. I'm not going to watch any French film. I, I'm not interested in it, okay? That's just, that's just me, all right? Now, here's the thing. Cuties, it comes out. And it goes on, and then it goes on Netflix, and Netflix puts out the poster, and and my first impression of it was the poster, and it was like this highly sexualized, uh, you know, nine to eleven year old girls, five of them, like, sh you know, one of them's on their hands and knees, sticking their ass out. It's like another one looks like Brock Lesnar, the wrestler. I don't know what that's about, but it is something. The chick in the middle, she looks like Brock Lesnar. I don't know if that's what they were going for, but that is what they got. Uh, uh, and, and then another girl's like wearing the glasses and she's doing the porno face and it's just like really, really uncomfortably sexual. And I saw that and I was like, whoa, what the fuck is that? And then obviously there's outrage about this poster and, uh, then Netflix changed their poster. And when that happened, I was like, oh, okay. So obviously the poster was just crazy because the director actually came out against the poster and said, oh, it doesn't represent my film properly. So... I was like, oh, well, that's it. Fine. Okay. So obviously the film's not like that. The post's not like that. And then I kind of forgot about it. And then I was scrolling through uh, Twitter and the film properly goes out on Netflix and people start actually watching it. And I, people start posting clips of the film. And I've, I'm of the opinion of, oh, it's just like overblown. It's not that bad. Who cares? Then I start seeing clips from the film and I'm not talking 30 seconds I'm not talking 10 seconds like out of context shit I'm talking like I reckon I've watched a good portion of the movie just you know when you just fucking doom scroll where you just see something that's just absolutely fucking horrific in your news feed but you can't stop watching I did that with the cuties film it goes for an hour and a half I reckon I've watched about 50 minutes worth of different clips and Jesus fucking Christ the poster is tame in comparison I thought that the poster was just over-sexualized, you know, Americanized fucking uh, shock factor on purpose to get controversy and then get people to watch the film and then everyone goes, oh, well, it's not actually that bad. It's actually a beautiful film. Dude, it's literally disgusting. I, looking at the clips, I've, I, I don't, you guys know me, I don't get offended, bro. I don't even know if offended is the right word for what I felt when I was watching these fucking clips it's like these uh, basically imagine a stripper dancing but make them nine like just seeing chicks like literally shake their asses put their legs up over their head touching their pussy actually over the top of clothes but still like doing that multiple times and like if that isn't bad enough the cinematography of it is zooming in on their privates, zooming in on them bending over, zooming in on their hands, touching their privates, like multiple, multiple shots, long shots that stay on their behinds and stay on their fucking little bodies. It's, it's fucking disgusting. And I just, I cannot believe that it's been made. Now, let's go through the arguments of it. That's my point of view, but obviously other people have a different point of view. Now, other people think that, uh, you know, sexualizing children for art is fine. Now, to those people, I would say uh, you, you should be executed, but whatever. The reaction to it has been 
This is how fucking poisoned the discourse on Twitter is, where if anyone is angry about something, it immediately, within 30 seconds, becomes a right-wing versus left-wing thing, right? Now, what I saw was a bunch of kids being depicted incredibly sexually. And I thought, fuck, I hope Donald Trump builds the wall. I'm going to vote for him because I'm right wing. No, I didn't fucking think that. I thought that's fucked. That shouldn't be happening. And it doesn't matter what I, who I'm going to fucking vote for. That shouldn't ha fucking happen. And I saw a bunch of other people thinking the same thing, regardless of the political spectrum. But all of these fucking journalists who have completely lost touch with reality have decided to try and spin this into a right-wing versus left-wing issue. Now, I'm going to give you guys a really big tip to all of these journalists who are trying to make right-wing people look bad using this film. I want you to really think about this. Saying that right-wing people do not like a film where children are sexualized is not the own you think it is. Because if I read a headline and I'm on the fence about right wing and left wing, I'm like, well, I don't know who I should vote for. And then I see a fucking headline that says, right wing people hate this film where children are sexualized. I'm going to read that and go, well, does, does that mean that left wing people like children in booty shorts touching their pussies? I guess that makes me right wing. <laughs> Any fucking sane person would think that shit. If you're making it a right left issue, where it's like left wing's okay with it, right wing's not okay with it, a person on the fence is going to go, yeah, well then I guess I'm right wing. Like that's so not the fucking own you think it is. It's like, oh, these bloody right wing alt right people hate pedophiles. And then everyone in the world goes, yeah, me too. <laughs> Not that me too. It's nuts, right? Now, the, the, the most coherent argument for the film I have seen, and I watched, I actually watched the, the director. Um, I think I've done a lot more research than a lot of people on this, and I've come out the other side even stronger in my first reaction, which was, this is fucked, right? So the, the fucking director came out and and I, I watched this whole thing she's so she says uh and it's a and and you know what makes this even worse is that she is a uh a black muslim woman right now you fucking know if a white guy made this film they would be fucking over but because it's a black muslim woman all of these intersectional cunts are pulling their hair out because they, a lot of them don't like this, but a lot of them are like, oh, fuck, if I, if I shit on a black female Muslim director, that's not good for my image, right? Because, you know, that's what they want. They want more representation in directors. But it's, it's, such, a, it's such a hard bargain when you go, oh, I want more of this specific person. And then because that's such a, obviously a rare type of person, like, you know, getting a black fe female Muslim director is such a hard ask that this chick might be one of the only ones that's actually made a big budget film that's got it into a fucking film festival. That might be the only one you got. And unfortunately, it just happens to be about chicks shaking their pussy when they're nine, right? My neighbors can hear all of this. <laughs> so she's come out and said the film is actually speaking out against sexualizing uh, children because she was sexualized as a child. <clears throat> a lot of pedophiles were also victims when they were children. Is that an excuse? I don't think so, right? Not saying that she's a pedophile. I don't think she's a pedophile. I think that she has tried to make a point in the worst way possible, right? Because here's what she's done. She's tried to speak out against... I don't think this, the woman who made it has evil intentions. There's a lot of sus shit about the cinematographer, though, who's made very similar films. I saw one thing, a whiff about some fucking film about a 15-year-old, and the cinematographer was involved with that, and it got a lot of the same controversy. Now, I'm not say, now if you make one of these films, okay, fine. Maybe you made an artistic misstep. If you made two of them, hey, let's have a look at your hard drive. What's on there? <laughs> Oh, you've got Tor? What's that for, buddy? 
Anyway, right? So she's come out and said the film is speaking out against the sexualization of children. Now, I wrote this on Twitter and I thought a lot about this. Now, it's a, it's a joke, but I think, it, I think it makes the point pretty coherently in why I think this is fucked. A lot of the people who are standing up to this film, and it, it's, it's just like this right-left thing of like, a lot of people who are right-wing, you know, like fucking Ted Cruz has come out and made a lot of noise about this. Uh, but then, you know, one of the Democratic nominees, uh, what's her name? The, the, the veteran bitch. That's the most disrespectful way to talk about someone who fought for the freedom of the West. You know, that veteran bitch. <laughs> what's her fucking name? I don't know, the one who was doing the workout videos, and I was like, I'd vote for her because I want to see her in the office. Whatever her name is, she came out against it too. Um, uh, where are we? So I, I wrote this on Twitter, which I think sums up my opinion pretty well. Guys, you're missing the point of cuties. The director says it's about how bad sexualizing children is. Clearly, the only way to prove that is by doing it. This is why, when explaining to my children that they shouldn't do drugs, I will be injecting the youngest with black tar heroin. Basically saying, you can't speak out against how bad something is while doing it. Right? She's going, oh, isn't the sexualization of children bad? Look how bad it is while filming a nine-year-old's pussy. That's not how you make your point. Now, a lot of people came back at me and they said, oh, like some dumb, some absolute fucking brain-dead mongoloid dumb cunt replied to my tweet and said, oh, what? So we can't represent bad things in film? What about war movies? War is worse than that. Are you saying we should ban all war scenes? Yes. If every war scene resulted in actual death, those are literally representations of, fi of fighting and of death. They do not include any real death. Do you see what I'm saying? You can't recreate the sexualization of a child to prove how bad it is because you are doing that it's like you can't say oh abusing animals is bad look how much this cat hates it when i put it in the boiling water it's like I, th why this is even a debated issue blows my fucking mind like i think making films about the exploitation of children is totally fine but you can't dress a girl up as a whore and make her dance like a stripper and say, oh, look how fucked that is. <laughs> That's not how you do it. It's, it's like nuts. It's like, it, like, you know, even if you were to make that film and you did have child actors, there are so many ways that you could have filmed that and made the same film. Like, did it need close-ups of a nine-year-old's ass? I don't think it did. You know, like you can have them dancing. You can even have them doing a little bit of fucking sensual. Even, I don't know. Like, I guess you can't. I don't think you can do that shit. What I'm, what I meant, what I meant to say is, you could, you could have them on on stage, and you could rep, you could represent them dancing sexually without filming them do it. You know, like I mean, you see that all the time in like sex scenes that are in. Uh, children's films where the characters clearly have sex but it's done off screen do you know what I mean like you don't there's so many ways to convey a sexual thing without filming it and especially with children that's the best course of action you know what I mean like if you must have a film about children that are dancing incredibly sexy I don't think you can film them doing it show close-ups of their their child bodies make them touch their privates, make them touch each other sexually, make them shake their ass, zoom in on it, and then put in literally minute and a half, two minutes of that with no other shit happening other than that. You know? Maybe film people reacting to the dance so that the audience totally understands, oh, they're doing a sexual thing and maybe that's, that's bad. Maybe show the effects of them being sexualized without showing them being sexualized like there's so many different ways that you can make that point without doing the very thing that you're trying to say is bad is what i'm saying it's literally like punching someone and go wow that's why you shouldn't punch someone 
How much did that hurt? So you can you can convey why that's a bad thing without fucking doing it. So that that's that's my thoughts on the cuties film. I think that it's fucked, and and to to think that it is a right wing versus left wing thing is insane because all that's gonna do is make people who haven't made their decision go more right wing because if they are the only people speaking out against a film that literally sexualizes children and they see those clips and left wing people go, oh, look at all these right wing people. They hate this film. Isn't that fucked? Normal people are going to go, yeah, I don't think I agree with that. I'm going over here. That's what I think about that. Um... So yeah, I think the poster was actually a very good representation of what the film was because uh, in that poster, the girls are wearing those costumes in the film for like two minutes. They're doing a dance on a stage that looks exactly like what it is on the poster. They are all doing those poses in the film. In fact, I would say the film is worse than the poster. So yeah, that's I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop talking about it because I just think that it's fucked. <laughs> Anyway, going back to my new chin, uh, guys, my girlfriend tried to murder me. If you don't know, it's been an ongoing thing. Not my girlfriend trying to murder me, but my new chin saga. Uh, I'm waiting to do a sleep study. Basically, keep you up to speed. I got terrible sleep apnea, and the doctors think, we need to confirm this, but I got scans, got tests, this, that. They think it's because my jaw is too far back. I've got the opposite of an underbite. Um, my jaw has moved too too far back, so what they want to do, they what they think they want to do, I need to do one more test, but they want to smash my jaw, move it forward, I'm going to have the most Chad Alpha Energy fucking jawline in the world, and I'm going to take your girlfriend home. Uh, but in the meantime, I can't sleep because when I lie on my back or when I'm on my side, air can't come into my throat, okay? Uh, because my the, the there's too much, not enough space, so they need to move my chin forward. Now, my girlfriend tried to murder me. Uh, love my girlfriend. She's amazing. We're very much in love. Uh, but uh, she did try to kill me, and I needed I needed to address this. Uh, we're in I, now. I didn't know this. This is an attempted murder without my knowledge. I didn't know this at all. Uh, my girlfriend had to tell me this. She very guiltily uh, told me this uh, the other day after we got up about lunchtime. She decided to come clean and tell me about the attempted murder. She very sheepishly said, "Hey, Louie." I said, yep, what's up? And then she immediately looked guilty. And I thought, oh, fuck, what's wrong? What's happened? What have you done? And she said, I need to tell you something. And I was like, oh, no, what the fuck's happened? That's not never a good conversation to have with your girlfriend. She goes, look, I, uh, I, uh, I'll just tell you what happened. I'm like, okay. So you were asleep on your back and I was cuddling you because I'm a very heavy sleeper. My girlfriend is a very light sleeper. And I was cuddling you. I was like, yeah, okay, where's this going? Uh, and you started struggling to breathe because you were on your back. And I thought, yeah. Now, normally what she does, she just pushes me over, wakes me up a little bit, gets me to roll on my side. I'm all good. And she says, and I uh, was so comfortable that I just let you struggle. <laughs> Bitch, you tried to fucking kill me. What have I done? i got to do my housework. That's fucked. She tried, guys, she tried to fucking murder me. Think about that. I'm, I'm fucking desperately trying to inhale while I'm conscious. And she's just, what, what am I, dating Derek Chauvin? <laughs> she's trying to fucking murder me, bro. I'm going to get in trouble for that. <laughs> you have to, re when you see me getting cancelled for that, you have to reply. I laugh. She tried to fucking murder me, dude. Where do we go from there? Oh, that was a bit of a peak, wasn't it? <clears throat> How long are we going here? Oh, fucking I never check the fucking time before I start. Guys, I got no idea how long we've been going here for. Uh, but I uh, I do have... Uh, I wanted to talk about the, uh, the little update on the leafy situation. So... Um, if you don't know, I talked about this, you know, a couple episodes ago. Uh, Leafy got banned from YouTube, and my thoughts at the time were, I, it, it seemed like he wasn't given enough warning, and I didn't like creators celebrating the fact that he was banned. Now, my opinions changed a little bit. I think he actually was 
given enough warning. Looking back, he got a few strikes uh, and then he continued on um, doing the same shit and uh, he got banned for it. And then also just the, the 10 videos in a row, you just can't do that. It, it like That fits YouTube's and a lot of people's definition of targeted harassment. So I think the, the ban probably could have been better communicated uh, but I do think that it is that it is legitimate, right? Uh, I still, however, however, believe that no creator should ever celebrate another creator getting deleted from the website because all that does is it emboldens these sites to crack down because, you know, how it works is Leafy was on the outskirts, he's gone now, guess who's on the outskirts next? It's you. Right? That's that's just how this shit works. That's how the website has been going. I mean, you have a look at fucking some of the cultural pillars of the website. Fucking Filthy Frank, Max Mofo, iDub. Some of their classic, classic videos have been taken down permanently, whereas before they were allowed uh, and even encouraged and allowed to thrive on the website. So it that, that slippery slope thing when it comes to what is controversial is real and I... I think if you don't think that's real, you're kidding yourself. Um, now, uh, Leafy has since been banned from Twitch. I called this, I can't remember if I said it on record, but I I definitely said it to a few friends. I don't think I said it publicly because I, I didn't. I, I would never wish, wish ill on another person. But I just saw it happening because uh, I, I just think he was being a dumb cunt on Twitch. Uh, now, I've never really been the, the biggest critic of him because I, I totally understand the appeal of the content. It's like reckless, fuck you, burn the world energy. You know what I mean? That's, that's, that, those are my roots. I've got a lot of that in me. A lot of, those pe- a lot of people are attracted to me because of those. I totally understand why, why there's appeal. There's a lot of people going, no, oh, it's shit. It's fucking terrible. How can anyone like it? And it's like, ah, dude, that's kind of why they do because no one else is doing that and it is such fuck you energy that's what people are attracted to. Um, so so I totally get his appeal, and I uh, I get why it's popular. Um, that being said, I think he's just a bit of a dumb cunt, uh, where he got banned from YouTube, and then he moves over to Twitch, and he had such an opportunity to thrive on Twitch if he just played by their rules. Uh, and he's come out on Twitter and said that he, he knew that he was breaching their guidelines he knew that he was pushing it so he was doing that intentionally it's not like he did not know right he comes on there and he's doing live streams like that are titled uh, uh i uh it was something along the lines of i took down pokimane and now i'm gonna take her place just dumb shit like that like you can't fucking uh get banned for making 10 videos in a row on one of the most popular Twitch streamers in the world. You can't get banned from another website for targeted harassment of that person and then go to her home ground and do the same shit to her. Of course, Twitch is going to see that shit and be like, oh, this is the guy that contributed to uh, the reason why she took a break, which fucked with her and fucked with the community. And now he's making, he's entitling streams after her. And the comment sec, the, the co- live comment section is when I, when I checked out, because I checked out a few streams and it was pretty entertaining, but the comment sections were, you know, people were spamming, oh, Pokemon's a whore and all this, you know, terrible shit about her. And, and there was no moderation at all. Um, and I, t- I definitely think that no creator should be held responsible for the actions of their fans unless you say, go and do this. That's a different story. But if you don't, if you don't tell them to go and harass someone or go and do this, if you don't tell them to do anything, and then people do do something. In fact, Leafy was pretty good in the sense that he always had a little disclaimer that said, "Do not harass somebody." If you, if you, unless you're telling someone to do something, you're not responsible for somebody doing something, basically. But on Twitch, I've come to, you know, I've found out because I've been looking through the guidelines because I'm starting up on there. If there is some real fuck shit happening in your comment section and you don't address it, so if people are spamming, you know, I don't know, someone's address, for example, and you let that happen, you're liable for it, which I think is, you know, legitimate because there'd be plenty of times where, you know, there might be one popular streamer who gets docs and then they might jump in my stream and start posting their address. If I don't ban someone for posting somebody else's address, that's gonna hurt them and if i definitely know about it i'm contributing to that so i totally get that 
and he wasn't doing that and he was making fucking streams titled oh pokemon's done and then he was saying the you know saying the n-word which does go against their terms of service and then he was saying fuck shit about people and i I, I just think that he's a bit of a dumb cunt (laughs) unfortunately that's my opinion of it was what did you think was going to happen bro you fucking pushed the rules and you got what happened especially because on youtube it's a little bit more forgivable because that he was so too big to fail so i can understand taking the risk but after getting kicked off youtube and then also not deciding to play it safe i don't think you can argue that it's unfair i think you would would just unless you were planning to get banned to promote some other thing or to become the guy who was banned from youtube and twitch which is a powerful thing which, but I don't think that's what he was trying to do because after he gets banned, he's on, he's going on Twitch tweeting at them asking, why was I banned? Why didn't I get a warning? It's like, bro, you can't break the rules on purpose and then act like a bitch when you get banned. That's sad. I think that's just dumb cunt energy. And that's, you know, I'm sure he's a nice fella, but uh, I just, I just think that you're dumb. But if you do that shit and if you're surprised that it's going to happen or if you start whining, if you do that shit and that's your plan and you stand by it, that's a completely different thing. But if you do it and you get banned from YouTube and then you do the same shit on Twitch and you get banned from Twitch and you start crying about it, it's like, bro, you had your fucking wake up call. You can't do that shit on the internet anymore. That's, I mean, that's why I'm so grateful for performing live. Not that my shows are, all right, get a cunt's Pokemon, it's a whore. That's not what, <laughs> not what I do at all i'm telling real jokes but you i don't know it's just it's just the it's just the way that it is with these companies and and what you're better off doing rather than intentionally violating the guidelines is you are better off trying to convince them to change the guidelines while you're on the website because if you get booted off them you're fucked um so i don't know i just i just think that it's just a little bit amusing. I think he's just a bit of a dumb cunt. He just thought he was invincible, and uh, he wasn't. So I don't know what he's going to do now. I I just, from like, I don't know, just from, he's so young, because he's even younger than me. I, like, I, I, I often put myself in other people's shoes. If I was him, because he's always posting about how he has millions of dollars. It's like, bro, when you got fucking five, six million dollars in your 20-something... It's, and if you get banned from the two biggest monetizable platforms on social media in the world and your only skill is social media, fuck, it's not that much money, you know? Five, six million dollars when you're 20, if you cannot make any more money, it's not that much money. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's it really isn't. It's, that'll... It's not going to last that long unless you're insanely careful with it. If you can't generate more of that, if you just have a bulk five mil cash and you're twenty something, you got to be careful with that shit. So best of luck to him. I'm sure he'll figure something else out. I guess he'll go streaming on Facebook Live, getting abused by fucking boomers. <laughs> what else? Do you- Conor McGregor arrested for alleged sexual assault and indecent decent exposure in Corsica. The fuck is Corsica? Dude, Captain America... One thing I never thought I would wake up to is just Captain America accidentally sharing pictures of his cock. You know, I, I, I log on fucking TikTok, which I'm going to get to next because there's breaking news with TikTok as well. <laughs> I log into TikTok and everyone's posting memes about Captain America that I just don't understand at all. I'm like, oh, what's happened with him? Is there a new movie? Because <laughs> everyone's like, yes, we love Captain America. I'm like, oh, is there a new movie? I thought he, I thought he retired that character. I go on Twitter, I search Chris Evans. I'm like, oh, there's his cock. Never thought I would see that, you know. But it's good to see a little bit of gender equality in the in the leaked nudes thing. But it just it's how male is that? Just some fucking dumb cunt leaking his own nudes onto his own story. At least these women got hacked, you know? Like it's terrible what happened to them, but at, at least they tried, you know, to hide their shit. Us I would say most of the most celebrity leaks of men I see is just cunts accidentally posting it. 
Uh, you, you rarely see men get hacked. Often it's just us releasing it accidentally. That'll be how I go out. Whoops. Although, you know what? When I get my new chin, I'm definitely going to get hacked. They're going to try and get my nudes because I'm going to be so fucking hot. People are just going to, they're just going to, now they're going to have to see it. I should start an OnlyFans for my chin. Just, just chin pics. That's it. <laughs> oh, fuck. I, uh, I, I, I might take a little pause here. I need to see how long we've been going for and then I'll see if we can do this other thing I wanted to do. Fuck yeah, we got time, we got time. Guys, I would like to uh, hold a little congratulations. I'd like to say a big congratulations to TikTok. Uh, you've hit a milestone that not every social media platform uh, hits. You know, I would say that uh, this, is a, this is a pretty big milestone for TikTok and I would say that you're not really, truly a social media platform until this happens to you. So I, I, I really think that obviously every social media platform has this kind of uh, uh, graduation from going to like a little niche thing that some people use to becoming a fully fledged, widely used mainstream social media platform. And it, it tends to be this, there are a couple of other reasons, but it's generally when this thing happens on your platform, that's when you're officially a social media platform. Uh, Facebook's had it, uh, Instagram's had it, Twitch has had it, all, all of these like widely used mainstream platforms, they're not, they didn't really become the juggernauts they are today until this happened. This is when you really graduate from niche app, weird website, strange uh, Chinese forum into a fully fledged social media platform for the masses. And I'd like to congratulate TikTok because they they recently hit this milestone uh, a, a few days ago. They they had their first ever live streamed suicide. <laughs> now that now I understand that's a terrible thing, but I but I have to really put out there that that's that's what makes this truly a social media platform. Is that like you're real? You really are sharing everything. If you're fucking killing yourself on a social media platform that's when they've really made it that's when because you know you can only do it once right like you, you should you should never do it but if, if you're gonna you know if you're gonna fucking neck yourself you only get to choose one platform to stream it on and i would say if someone chose to do it on your platform that's kind of a privilege that's a bit of an honor you know because you can't do one take for facebook one take for instagram like when i post a selfie you know, I'll put that on Facebook, I'll put it on Instagram, I'll put it on Twitter. That's three platforms. I might fuck, I might even put it on Snapchat. You know what I mean? But if I'm gonna you know, if I'm gonna live stream my suicide, that's a one and done. So it's gotta be the most important social media platform in my life. And for that guy it was TikTok. So I'd like to say congratulations to TikTok. You had your first live stream suicide. You know, it's the first of many. There's many more to come. Uh, obviously, you know, social media has completely de destroyed uh, the fabric of our society to the point where people are killing themselves. Uh, just to be noticed by children um, and it's a big milestone for your website and then to have a bunch of like nine-year-olds fucking clipping it and and then reposting it everywhere it's a real graduation moment Facebook had it Twitter had it you know YouTube's there I'm fucking even you porn had it you know it's happened on Twitch it, it, it really is a, a graduation moment it's terrible for the man and his family but for TikTok you should be standing up standing proud because you are really not a social media platform until somebody films themselves necking themselves and streams it live uh, because you know he could have done that anywhere, so you, you should wear that badge with pride. Uh, and, and now that's a that's a real prime example of of a, of something I probably should have saved for the Patreon only podcast. That's definitely, upon reflection, something that I definitely should have saved. Uh, but you guys know it's Spearhead Sundays. It's the most demonetized platform, uh, demonetized podcast uh, in the history of uh, of podcasts. Uh, I think we're going on in a row now it's got to be over 10 I, I think i'm pretty sure that i haven't had a single green dollar sign since uh episode 200 that's a big call but uh i i think that that's right what are we at what episode are we at now i can't even remember 
I'm pretty sure we're over 10 yellow dollar signs. And this is why you should support me on Patreon because I uh, am not making a dollar out of this shit and I refuse to change it. Where are we? So our first dollar, uh, yellow dollar sign was 201. So 200 was actually green for some, way, for some reason, probably because there was a woman in it. And they were like, oh, surely it's not heinous. 201. Oh, no, that's when they changed the rules on can't. If you say can't, it's just yellow and, you, and your video gets suppressed. So here we go. Uh, Spirit Sunday is 201, all the way up to 211, and this episode, I'm assuming. So yeah, 12 episodes in a row, yellow dollar signs. We love to see it. Um, so that's great. If you'd like to support the show on Patreon, you can do so. You get an extra half an hour, which I'm going to continue on here. I've got a bunch more fuck stuff that I'm going to talk about, uh, which you, you would love to hear. Uh, and that's going to continue on in the, uh, Patreon. If you just Google Lewis Spears Patreon, you'll see it. You get an extra half hour of this podcast and every single podcast and you get them early, uh, which, uh, didn't happen this week because I've been setting up the Twitch stuff, but now Twitch is rolling. So they'll be coming out every like Thursday, Friday around then, um, so yeah, that's that's great. So thank you very much for listening, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I'm, I'm fucking stoked with my mug. I've been using this shit every day. I actually want two because I know I'm going to smash it. And um, yeah, I guess I'll, I'll see you guys on Twitch, huh? That's going to be a fun stream. Let me know definitely what you want to see on Twitch, what games you want me to play, what what activities you want to do because um, it's, it's going to be a stream for you guys. I wanted to make it as entertaining as possible because I'm fucking desperately missing performing live uh, and i'm missing the live feedback with you guys so please do tune in be active in the chat uh because it's for me it's like it's like crowd work it's it's like improv it's it's obviously not the same as stand-up but it's it's a nice little substitute it's like it's like the drugs they give you in prison and when you come in and you're addicted to heroin it's not the same thing but fuck it puts you to sleep um, and with that, I'm going to end it. Thank you very much. Speared Sundays, support me on Patreon. I'm going to continue on in a little bit. But until then, I hope you have a shit one.